All right, Art, if you wanna take it away. All right, thank you, Amy. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our second Garden Center Town Hall of 2023. Um, just a, a reminder that if you attended the first town hall or if you missed it, um, it is a recorded session, so you can get a copy of it. Um, probably best to email Carrie at the email address shown below. I know she sent out a link as well. Um, so anyways, we'll get started. And then also just a reminder that we have another town hall, the third one in the series, or the last one in the series, which is going to be held next week on Monday on employee wellness. Just want to call out to a, a couple things to everybody on the screen so you can see that uh, we're, we're doing our best to communicate um, garden center industry events that are that are happening and that uh, can be relevant to people in the province as well as across Canada and around the world. Um, so you can scan that uh, QR code to get more detail on it. Um, but again, always reach out. So um, lots of good information available and our goal is to support independent garden centers across Ontario to help you um, grow your business. So today we're gonna be um, tackling an interesting topic. Uh, in independent garden centers deal with various areas um, to, to ensure that their businesses remain healthy. Uh, plant warranties have long been um, a contentious part of our business. Um, the irony um, with, with all of us being plant people, but, but recognizing that, you know, we're selling products that, you know, can take a couple months to produce all the way up to five or 10 years. And it breaks, breaks our heart often to see that they can die so quickly for various reasons. So, to, to help discuss that topic, we've got three experts uh, in the garden center businesses available today to share their strategies and their expertise. And uh, with that, we will get started. So uh, first up is Tanya Olson from Royal City Nursery. Um, Tanya is most inspired when relationships between mentoring, nature and lifestyle intersect. Tanya is the third generation owner of Royal City Nursery in Guelph. After completing a Bachelor of Landscape Architecture at the, Lands at the University of Guelph, she joined the family business full-time. In 2015, Tanya and her husband, Dave White, succeeded the business and after being expropriated by the MTO from their previous location of 54 years, they successfully moved and built the business to their present location just outside of Guelph. Tanya followed her father, Peter's footsteps, to teach in the horticultural apprenticeship and landscape technician programs at Humber College. And she serves on several committees for the Garden Center Group Co-op Corporation. Her life has been immersed in supporting creative and outdoor living spaces. From sleeping in the wheelbarrow as a toddler to managing the garden center after high school and to now guiding the business through another expansion, horticulture has always been in her blood. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Tanya and say, welcome Tanya. Awesome Art, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm just gonna get my screen shared up here. So hopefully I do this right. We'll see how this goes. And we're gonna share that. There we go. So I'm hoping everybody's got the first page. So uh, thank you so much, Art. I'm um, truly blessed to be in this industry and um, really excited to be chatting today. So that, that part's totally awesome. 
So again, just to give a little bit of background on, on Royal City Nursery, my grandfather started it in 1962. So we are uh, 61 years young right now. And we range anywhere from uh, five employees through the winter, right up to 25, potentially 28, 29 during high season, just depending on what things and what things happen. I think we all know that. And then with our business, one of the things that is a little bit different is we're um, a few different divisions. So we've got the garden center proper to take care of cash and carry. So retail, absolutely. And that's everything from annuals, perennials, water plants, tropicals, right up through nursery stock and all the plant support products. We also have a landscape design build division. And we also have a fashion boutique as well. So when we're thinking about re, uh, retail warranties and, and return policies, all of those have something that's very slightly different. Um, so for us, one of the big things that's not different is every single warranty actually, to me, starts with the sale itself. It doesn't start with after the thing is dead or broken. It starts when that person walks right into the store. So we want to make sure that we've got the training in place that our team can actually suggest the right plant, the right place, or the right item, the right object. Um, and I certainly, we, we advocate that our, if, a, if something's not right, we advocate for our team to say, you know what, that's not the best solution for you. I really want you to be successful in the long term. So instead of this, let's try that. And that, that seems to work. Um, the other thing that, that we do is try to ensure they've got all the full knowledge up front. And in addition to actually having the verbal knowledge, so they've heard about it and chatted through it, we also make sure that going out the door, they have a physical piece of paper in their hand. So that's the, the brochure that you're seeing on the right-hand side of the screen. Receipt gets stapled into that, and that's got planting instructions on the inside. I know it's paper. Um, but this information is also on the website. It's also um, above our cash. And this season, we're also including more signage on the store floor to, to see that. We also make sure that all of the client information gets put into our POS. So if the client loses the receipt, we've got that information and we don't have to worry about having it later on. When We'll look at our published warranty in a minute, um, but realistically, when we think about warranties and return policies, we try to make sure that it's, again, found in a, a few different spots. Online, it's got the paper pamphlet, and then for any of our landscape clients, one of the last lines on the invoice in bold ink is a link to a Google Doc that the client can take and paste into their browser. So it takes them right, to, it actually skips the website and takes them right to the page itself. And it goes through the warranty there. Um, so we try very hard to educate beforehand. We try very hard to educate in the middle and we try very hard to educate in the end. And sometimes it doesn't always necessarily work. Um, one of the big things for me that I, I remember quite a few years ago, um, we were in an LO meeting and at the time was talking to Carl Stenson um, about warranties. And one of the things Carl said is realistically, they didn't buy it to kill it, right? They, they bought the plant or the flower or the whatever it was to have a really good success. So if it comes back, listen to the, listen to the client, figure out what the problem was and let's get it replaced. Let's get it refunded. Let's do something that we can actually help and develop a long-term perspective. Um, so if we're returning something, we return it to a gift card. We don't return the... Uh, a spirea for a spirea because if if you got it at 60% off you got it at 60% off so here's a gift card let's see what you can do and again we we really prefer to educate at that point um, and if it's whether that's in store or if we've got something on the landscape side that's that's unfortunately died we really want to get that replaced so we try very hard to do a, a client visit and a yard visit to that as well for us, our plant warranty um, is pretty specific and this one hasn't changed for a while. We're, we're one of the short-term ones. So we guarantee for a year for the date of purchase, everything that's hardy, whether it's shrubs, evergreens, vines, trees, whatever it is to the maximum of value paid. 
plants have to be maintained. They've got to be planted in the ground. So if you bought it last fall, you left it up, it's in the pot and you left it on the deck, I'm sorry. But again, we reserve the right to educate. For landscape clients, and this is something I put in place a few years ago, if we had difficulties getting, uh, getting paid on time, then that has the potential to void the warranty as well. So we, we tied that in and that actually helped cash flow fairly quickly, which was kind of nice. Anything that's uh, rodent or pet damage. So if the, the family pooch pees on the thing and turns to cedar black. Sorry, kids. We Again, we reserve the right to educate. Um, we warranty our roses until November 1st of the year of purchase. And then um, in store, we don't, we publicly say annuals, tropicals, water plants, or perennials are not covered under warranty. Realistically, if somebody brings a hanging basket back, they've got the receipt and it's dead, I'm gonna give them a new one, right? So again, I wanna educate at the same time that we're doing that. Um, delivery for whatever reason for, for every service is never ever covered under warranty. The delivery was always performed and the service was always taken. So we keep the warranty limited to our plant stock. In order to redeem the, the warranty, we need the client to do one of two things. Um, they need to call us or at least email us and say, hey, I've got a problem. We encourage that, um, that phone call or email to come in long before the plant's actually dead. So if you've got a problem, call us because a lot of times, as all of us know, we can educate and with a little bit of TLC, keep the darn thing actually going so then they don't have to start all over again. Now that COVID's done, we don't accept photographs as proof of death. So you need to bring, you need to dig up the dead thing, bring it in with the tags, with the bill. And we look at the clients and say, we need a body and a bill every time. If that means you've got to take that cedar and hack it up into little pieces, beautiful. Get your aggression out on, the, on that dead thing and bring it back in a bag. We're happy to do that. We then replace the value on a gift card and we actually punch that gift card with a hole punch. So we know exactly whether or not the warranty, uh, that, that value on the gift card is the warranty. So when that gift card gets redeemed, we've got a, a receipt message right on the bottom to say these plants are not warrantied. And we're, we're up front with it, right? We look at a client say, if, if you wanna pay for this plant with this gift card, because it's got that hole punch, this isn't gonna be warrantied. So why don't you pay for your soil or something else and let's try a different plant. And that actually seemed, um, I was surprised by that perspective. It actually went really, really well. And we found our clients appreciated that because um, that, that was the part I was a little nervous about. So we implemented that after COVID. One of the things we found with COVID is our, our warranties went up and our returns went way, way up because people were just really unsure. So I, I wanna take that unsureness out um, the other thing that we do is we're, we're very vocal that if the plant has not leafed out and we're only in the first week of May, we're not going to dig it up yet. There's always hope. The weather could turn around. So let's see if there's an improvement. And if it means that we need to extend the warranty by a month or two months or three months, awesome. Let's do that because then the client can keep it. And if it leaves out like a Rosa Sharon that's going to leaf out a little bit later, sweet. They didn't have to do any work. And we did a little bit of education on them. When we look at our fashion boutique, um, this return policy, we tried very hard to align with a typical fashion store. And I know, I, I know we're, we're plant people and, and um, we talk plant warranties and whatnot, but when we look at the fashion side of things, this is the client who's still buying a shrub. So, it helps to have the, all of the policies kind of aligned. And with this, it's just really simple. Um, you can bring it back in seven days, so long as it's got the tags. If it doesn't have the tags, I'm sorry, then uh, we'll see what else we can do, but we're gonna take it and we're gonna refund it to a gift card. Nine times out of 10, when people do come into our fashion boutique, they came with the, oh, I need a bag of soil, but I bought a dress. And we look at them and say, did you remember to buy the bag of soil? As long as you did that, your husband will be just fine. And then for uh, non-plant items, the 
we honor all the manufacturer warranties. So we have a water garden department and pumps are one of the big warranty issues with that. Um, so we make sure we handle all the warranties in um, in-house. And again, we reserve the right to educate. So we want to see if we can figure out why the pump isn't working and what can we do differently on the next time. And then anything with uh, with non-plants, it's got to be in its original saleable condition and it's got to have all the original price tags. Again, all of that information, all the client information we put into our POS. I can't emphasize that enough. Get the information from the client, even if it's just a name and a phone number, right? They, and they're, they're nervous that you're going to all of a sudden, all of a sudden send them some marketing. At least get a name and a phone number so you can tell who that client is and then you can track the receipts for them. So when they lose the receipts, you still have it. And at the same time, you can look up what color of mulch they bought last year and, and get that out to them too. A um, Couple of things we started after COVID as well is um, anything that is specific seasonal decor. So Christmas, Easter, Valentine's, whatever, it's final sale. And then um, Christmas, if we buy a Christmas gift, then we bring that back until January 10th. The 20% the restocking fee may apply on, on any of items. We've had that in place for a number of years. Honestly, I don't use it, but it is enough for a few clients who, um, who may have some issues. It's enough for them to pause and think. And then again, at store level, we override that. So at store level, it makes it a lot easier. But again, this is our, we're on our last slide. The, the single biggest thing for, for me and, and for Royal City Nursery is we want to get that education in place first. Because if we can get them educated about how, how to actually take care of the thing, we got the right thing, then we're going to lower the warranties because they don't need them. Um, and when we look at, at warranties around or sort of warranty values, to put this in perspective, um, for us, an average year, would have a warranty that's less than half a percent of our nursery department sales. So it is really, really low. Um, and that, that part I'm, I'm super proud of, um, but that also means we, we do tailor our products a little bit. So if I know there's something that doesn't grow all that well here, then we don't carry it unless it's by special order. So for Royal City Nursery, that's, that's what we do. So I'd, I'm hoping that helps. And again, when we look at, at Perry and Eric, I know it's vastly different, we all are. Um, so I'm totally interested to see what they've got going on too. That's great, uh, Tanya. Thank, thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, very generous with the, the sharing of your expertise and your strategies. So um, have you stopped sharing the screen? There, there we, we go. go. Yay. <laughs> Um, I know, I know, I love technology. Not. Um, <laughs> Eric knows that better than most in this audience. So, so next up is Eric Votney from Sheridan Nurseries. Uh, Eric is a highly experienced retail professional with over 15 years of service at Sheridan Nurseries. He currently serves as the store manager in the Kitchener location where he is responsible for overseeing all, aspect, all aspects of store operations, including sales and customer service. Throughout his career at Sheridan, Eric has demonstrated a strong commitment to customer satisfaction and operational excellence. He is a skilled leader and motivator who fosters a positive work environment for his team. He is dedicated to ensuring that every customer who visits, visits the store leaves with the information and the products they need to achieve their goals. In Eric's personal time, he enjoys watching football and spending time with his family. He is also active in his community and values giving back to those around him. Eric's extensive experience and deep knowledge of the retail industry make him a valuable asset to Sheridan. He is well respected by his peers and colleagues and has a strong track record of success. Overall, Eric is a dedicated and experienced retail professional who brings a wealth of knowledge and expertise to his role as the store manager. He is committed to providing excellent customer service and ensuring the smooth operation of the store. 
So with that, I will say welcome, Eric, and the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, yeah, so um, Sheridan Nurseries, um, our main slogan is never stop growing. Um, so this is our, you know, our big touch um, punchline for it all is we know that nobody ever buys a plant to have it die. Uh, mistakes happen, nature happens, plants happen. That's why we offer one of the best guarantees growing. Um, so in our plant material, if you break it down into different subjects, uh, segments, um, they're all guaranteed with the uh, proof of purchase, original proof of purchase, or if it's in our computer database system. Uh, we warranty replacements for all nursery stock and perennials and roses from July, uh, from June 1st to October 31st to ensure that the plants are not in a dormant state. Um, that's the new thing that we just added in 2020 uh, with COVID, and then we've continued it on since. And it's really helped with a lot of the roses share and some of the early spring stock uh, butterfly bushes that uh, people dig up because they don't, they don't look the same that they think they look like. So they rip it out of the ground and bring it back. Um, our hardy nursery stock, trees and shrubs and perennials planted in ground are warranted for two years um, from date of purchase um, and planters and anything planted in containers are not warranty. Uh, roses are one year and our house plants non-flowering are three months. Um, our seasonal plant annuals and flower and house plants are not warranted uh, at all, other than if it, if it fails in like, you know, a couple of days right away, anybody brings it back. Like um, Tanya said earlier, you know, we're going to do what's right. If, you know, it dies right away, we're going to, you know, make it right with the guest. Um, and then in our hard goods and patio furniture guarantee, um, it's all based on the manufacturer's warranty. And then we deal directly, it's the guests would deal directly with us. So if it's a patio furniture or a hose issue or something like that, they'd bring it into us. And if we deemed it, you know, is a manufacturer defect or is it an issue, uh, we'd handle the whole return and replace it for the guest. We wouldn't um, just say, oh yeah, you have to call this 1-800 number and talk to um, someone else to deal with it. So it, it happens all in-house. Um, but how it works is basic. Um, you simply pre uh, present the receipt um of the planting question and you know we'll, we want to you know do all the education and talk to them and we'll replace it with an uh, a, the exact same item so one of the big differences we'll give them a new spirea if the spirea didn't make it um, if the price had gone up year over year uh, just with inflation and stuff we'll still give them it at the same price because uh, it's a direct replacement um if we chose to raise their prices or even lowered it they're not going to get extra money back that way um for that uh, if, they, if we no longer have the product in stock or they want to go with something different, uh, we'll give them the value they paid uh, back on a, uh, a gift card um, for them. Um, one of the new things we added last year was any product purchased at a 50% discount or greater or anything ending at price point zero zero is um, a final sale. Um, for, so it's not part of the returns, but it is still guaranteed for the price paid. Um, so it's not eligible for the direct replacement, but we'll still guarantee it um, that it'll survive. Um, it just basically it's just being pushed out at the end of the season, but it will we'll give you the money that it, the way you paid back on a gift card for another plant in the spring. Um, one of the other stuff was we're using a lot of technology um, to communicate our warranty to our guests. Um, if they're in our database and they purchase it, we have the capability of going back and sending a direct email to the guests, reminding them to water three days later. And sending and reaching out to that using that information, that data that anybody purchased um, a hydrangea in the summer, we'll send them a reminder that hey, it's 35 degrees, you need to water, and we'll send them a YouTube video from us on how to water and just really kind of promote um, the actually how long. Because a lot of people we know people don't kill it, uh, plants on purpose. And if they think they watered it, they might have watered it for 10 seconds, thinking they did a good job, and they're all they're all proud, but you know, meanwhile, it needed 30 seconds, two minutes on it. Uh, to really get it going. And kind of the data behind it, um, last year our replacements was 1.3% of sales. Um, it was a little higher than the year before at 0.9% um, corporately. But I think the big reason was, you know, we went into a record breaking COVID year the year before. I think everybody saw the, you know, uptakes where, you know, people were just coming and buying everything. So when you look at a percentage of sales, you sold more product the year before as a percentage of plants that actually come back. Um, with that, I think it ends up varying out that it, you would see an increase just on that 
and then just with the the heat waves we've had last summer where it rain it didn't rain for a bit of august and stuff you end up seeing higher numbers there but um kind of year over year in the last 10 years it's kind of all around that one percent one and a half percent it's all it all fluctuates in there on our replacements um yeah and that's it for me thank you very much eric um just a reminder to everybody uh, just before I hand the floor over to Perry, that if any of the, the participants have questions either for Perry, Eric, or Tanya, or the group as a whole, please uh, use the Q&A uh, box that, that you can see at the bottom of your screen when you scroll your mouse near there, so that we'll be able to go through some of these questions as we, uh, as we carry on. So with that, uh, our next speaker, Perry Groby of Groby Nursery and Garden Center. Perry started working with plants at Groby Nursery and Garden Center near Kitchener at the age of nine, back when Ontario's ch child labor laws were very lax. Sounds familiar, Tanya. Uh, he acquired his certification in weed pulling, sweeping, car loading, and ultimately graduated to work in other positions such as a laborer, a landscape construction foreman, landscape designer, um, operations supervisor before becoming a co-owner in 2006. Along the way, he learned one or two things about plants, shrubs, diseases, bugs, POS, and the like. Perry attended the University of Guelph for horticulture and was quite successful at that. He had won seven scholarships during his time but ultimately completed his degree in landscape architecture. He, current, he is currently a provincial registered landscape architect. He is also the past president of the Waterloo chapter of Landscape Ontario and has participated in the LO Garden Center sector group for many years. He has an understanding and beautiful wife and two daughters that are very fortunate to have their mother's good looks. He loves growing and sampling unusual tomato varieties, snooping for new and different plants, and after much practice, has found that if a glass of red wine in the garden makes one content, a bottle makes one very happy indeed. And I hope that's all after 12 o'clock, Perry. But, but with that, uh, thanks, Perry, and I will hand the floor over to you. I'm sure it's 12 o'clock somewhere, always. Um, <laughs> So um, uh, I am going to, uh, I have a small presentation, but just one little thing I would start with is that I've taken a little a different tact. Uh, I'm not going to uh, speak at length too much on what we cover, what we don't cover and so on, like the other two have certainly done so. Uh, that if available, if folks want to know, I'd be happy to share that with them after. But what I wanted to speak to mostly is the fact that uh, we have in instituted a new online process for dealing with warranty returns. And I wanted to talk just a little bit about that. So I'm gonna try and do the share screen here and I am hoping that they will, uh, if I have any problems with that, that it'll, there. Now, I am hope that everyone can see that. How are we doing, Art? It, it's on its way. It's on its way, a, okay. And, and there it is, Perry, you're good to go. Very good. Okay, so my, my, my talk is going to be a little bit about uh, uh, the online plant warranty process as we've done it here at Groby's. And um, now, not sure. Oh, just a minute here now. Your screen share just disappeared for me. How's that now? Now, it's coming back. And it's up on slide one, Perry. I'm not actually seeing my own screen, so. Hey, you're on slide one. All right, let me try a different way of doing this. Thought we had this working just fine before. Uh, 
Okay, I, I can see your computer screen and now I can see the presentation mode. Okay, so at the moment you should see a screen that says a bit about us, is that right? We all good? Okay, yes. so just a little bit about us. We were founded in 62. We have a six acre site uh, that is uh, that employs between 50 and 20 employees. It has floated up a little bit on occasion. And uh, we are situ situated almost dead center between Kitchener, Waterloo, Guelph, and Cambridge. And uh, we are open year round. So we also have a Christmas store that we deal with. Are we still good, Art? Tell me we're yes. good. Okay. Uh, a little bit of background. Uh, prior to uh, the pandemic, we had always, we had started to move to a pre-authorized ahead of coming settlement of warranty issues. And this was done largely to ensure that return plants were deceased prior to their arrival. It involved a call ahead or an email ahead to uh, step with an on-site examination of the return plants. Well, of course, COVID-19 changed all of that. We had to come up with a safer, better way to settle claims and to answer questions and to try to be a doctor more often than always a coroner. And of course, it had to be in a timely fashion. So with so many plant warranty situations, the key staff tend to be pulled away from other tasks almost always during peak times. It can sometimes be stressful or confrontational. Uh, there's a discussion too always, is it dead or is it just damaged with in-person? Uh, there's a range of planting care and experiences that come to the forefront when they return. And of course, uh, we have found, and I'm sure others have too, that there tends to be a trend towards an absence of responsibility by the customer for even the most basic of plant care. And of course, anything related to a warranty return or charge is going to be costly to the bottom line at some point. Now, what we decided to do, well, we thought, well, we're going to have to let them know our warranty will be different before they visit or purchase. We had to, we decided to move the process online, both from a safety standpoint and also to permit resolution of these issues to be done during off-peak times. Once a plant was deemed to be dead, it was settled quickly. We wanted to inform customers on what to do here with their warranty before they show up. We wanted to make it simple to deal with in our cash lanes. And so informing them first essentially was what we do is we anything that's difficult to grow is, is clearly indicated as some of those have different warranty terms. Uh, the website details what is it to be expected for warranty coverage on all the plants we have, just like the other two speakers would indicate. Our planting instructions and warranty is attached to every invoice that, of, of a warrantable plant. We clearly outlined the customer's basic responsibility for care and what to do with a problem. And we put the onus on the customer to be a responsible plant parent, and we define what that actually means. And finally, we do all of this pre-purchase. Okay, so that if they, if they look at us and review us, and if they find fault with that, they have the choice to make prior to arrival. Now, for example, here this is an example of our tagging of difficult to grow plants. So this is an addition to the price tag. Customer, we produce these in-house. The customer knows that this is a challenging plant prior to making a purchase, if the staff are not asked. And of course, it gives us an opportunity to inform the customer about commonly seen potential problems ahead of purchase. So in this case with Japanese maple, cold injury, root rot, leaf scorch, we know people see leaf scorch often. You might as well be upfront and tell them you're gonna see it. That way, when they call, I got a problem. You say, well, we tried to tell you about it before they actually show up with the plant. Now, the details of our warranty, this is essentially the back side of our planning instructions. We have several different kinds of paper planning instructions that we give the customers. And uh, it's on the back. The warranty is clear on the back and what to do about the warranty is clear on the back. And these pages are stable to the all important invoice because the invoice for us means that they purchased it from us and they have to have that proof of purchase. So you might as well make a big cumbersome, ugly bundle of paper that they're less likely to lose or throw out. Of course, all of this information too, it's not exactly in the same format, but it's paraphrased and it's also visible on our website. So here's a screen capture from our website indicating where we talk about our warranty and what the current customer's warranty responsibility happens to be. So what to expect and what we expect in return is clearly outlined ahead of a visit or a purchase. 
Of course, too, if you'll notice at the very bottom, we also mentioned the warranty portal, which is a vital part of what we deal with in terms of, of uh, responding to questions and queries or problems. So to help them promptly, we set up an online warranty portal. We're gonna show you a little bit more of that in a minute to be used to diagnose and insist that the first signs of an issue, and we put it incumbent upon them that it's in their, their responsibility as a, as a plant parent to let us know they got a problem that they can see. We're able then to discern the seriousness, seriousness of a plant situation and the plant remains in place in the ground until this is known. This of course helps to reduce issues with those seeking immediate replacement for foliage or floral damage. Scorched hydrangeas is a prime example, scorched Japanese maples, what have you. Okay, uh, of course, it's also much easier at, to physically see the problems. I'm old, bad eyes, big computer screen, much easier than dirty cell phone shoved in my face to look at the plant. Or worse, having the plant dug out of the ground when it's alive to be returned. We're able to deliver a timely accurate response before the circumstances become more serious or more deadly. And it also helps to put any plants that we know are having issues on our radar. So last year, this turned out to be flowering dogwood, sprinter boxwood, magnolia, a few wigilias, some macrophylla hydrangea species. It ranges every year a little bit, but, you know, and of course there are some that you see every year, but last year, you know, the ones, it became very s clear that some of them were having some issues. Now, the process, our process, well, first thing we do, is they're going to find a problem with the plant. We tell them very clearly they should be checking their plant on a regular basis. We ask them to complete a scratch test, which is indicated on our warranty portal and on the warranty documents. And this is, of course, to determine whether there's viable tissue yet still, to, that it's not just a late budding thing, potentially it could be. And from that point, they just submit from a mobile phone or our desktop website the basic information required to diagnose or determine what has taken place and or to settle the claim. This info includes the invoice number, which I mentioned before, of the purchase, the watering care that was done, the location, and pictures of what they were seeing with the plant. So here, for example, is some screen captures from our mobile warranty portal. And by the way, if you're all looking for it on our website right now, we don't submit or take warranty inquiries until the 15th of April. So it is not apparent or visible to customers until that time. So in this particular instance, you'll notice all the key information that's required. There are some drop-down boxes which make it, you know, that are with standard answers, for example, did I read it, where is it located, you know, and so on, so that they can do this with a fairly minimal amount of effort, okay? But the most important ones that are there are, when did you notice a change in the plant? Now you find out how well they've been watching it. Two, to describe the problem a little bit, so what are they seeing? And lastly, what's the regimen? What kind of watering are you doing up to that time? Because as you know, that tends to be the thing that is the most difficult part of the problem. And of course, an opportunity to upload images so that we can see exactly what they're looking at. So here, for example, is a typical submission that we would get back in return. So you'll you'll see that there, oh, I've cut and pasted the picture, but you'll see there's an, the result of the scratch test, the, the person's contact information, the transaction number of the receipt, uh, so that we know uh, where they had it. You'll see the two long links at the bottom of the screen. Those images are uploaded to our server and they have a 90 day link time and then they're automatically purged. So unlike having massive emails always showing up into an email account, this makes it a lot easier. I can see the image, make my call or our call here and then they're gone. We don't have to worry about it after that fact. So what do we do to resolve this after the fact? Well, what we have done is we have to make the call, is it dead or just damaged, okay? And as we are the, as we are the experts at this, this becomes our call. This is not necessarily in the hands of the homeowner or purchaser to make the determination whether it's dead or not. If we're going to be the experts, we have to be the one to accept this call. The second thing we do is with damaged plants, we will advise them on next steps they are to take. Now, generally that's done by email and this can sometimes be boilerplated. The nice thing is that because you haven't seen an image, you can actually speak to the plant, the exact conditions that they have right now and really drill down for a personal response to the problem that they're having. We'll ask them to contact us with a future update if we've decided that it's not really warrantable at this time and we extend the warranty if it's necessary. With a dead plant, our invoice number gives us the net value paid for the plant, which we then can find the invoice in our POS. And then with that information, we issue what's called a warranty proxy to the customer with the amount they're entitled to, and we email it to them. Now, I know proxy seems like it's a difficult concept, but you'll see in a minute why 
it is a proxy. It's not the actual warranty voucher. It's something related to it. To it. So the customer then needs only to bring in the proxy to get the replacement plant. The staff then match up the proxy to an actual voucher at a till. That way, if there's no voucher present, then it's already been claimed. The staff deduct the voucher amount from their purchase via universal non-inventoried SKU with fillable dollar value as a refund. So this then compiles for us the total number of claims made and the total retail dollars that have been used to settle the claims. And finally, the customer leaves with their replacement plants. They've not had to see any key staff. They have not had to return any plants. They've got what they're entitled to before they go, they come to the nursery, they get what they want, they can go very quickly. So here's an example of the documents that we would use. On the left is the, P, the from our POS is a copy of the invoice that was paid. And of course, if you'll notice at the very top, if you can see on your screen, the transaction number for the invoice is, is at the very top and that's how we're able to find it, okay, in the system. That's why we have to have the transaction number to start the process. With, without an invoice, there's nothing. They can't, there will be nothing given to them. From the, the document on the right would be the, uh, the actual proxy voucher, which we compile, it's just a simple Word document. We uh, put a new number on it that matches up to the pink warranty voucher tag at the very bottom. The amount that they're entitled to is calculated. The date of issuance is there. And of course, there is of course a, a time limit on, on them to resolve this issue. And the reason we have a time limit is because when people tell them to notify us that they want it, they want it done really quickly. In turn, we want them to resolve the issue relatively quickly too. Now, Things we've learned from all this process. Well, the first is almost everybody has a cell phone to take pictures. So there was some reluctance, you know, maybe not everybody would, but the fact is very few do not. Even those that are newcomers to Canada have that capability. Sometimes exceptions have to be made at our discretion and it has turned out to be usually our most elderly of our, of our patrons. We found it best to compile the submissions and settle them on one morning or evening a week usually on Friday. And this can be done outside of business hours if necessary, as there tends to be fewer distractions. In our case, we don't open our store till 10 a.m. So we do have a couple hours in the morning that this can be addressed if that needs, needs to be a problem. The emails that we send back and forth offer a paper trail of who's done what, both us and them. And it's also useful to know the history of the plant issue. It also means that folks that would be or potentially could be uh, you know, um, perennial favorites for warranty returns get identified relatively quickly. Now, I have to say that hasn't proven to be a, a point that's happened so far. We tend to reject very few for warranty. We delay quite a few because they obviously have in the plant that's dead, but those that are generally rejected outright for warranty are tend to be few. Uh, but quite frankly, the largest number of those that tend to happen are usually as a result of apathy. We do not reward apathy, blatant apathy, as that is very different from then trying and failing, okay? Because if you just didn't care, that's really not acceptable. Uh, if all the information comes in, resolutions to these kind of problems are quite quick. It really doesn't take as much time as you might think. Last year, I would agree with the other two speakers, you know, there were quite a few more because the year before we had lots of people buying stuff. But even so, I didn't find that the time spent on uh, dealing all this uh, with paperwork was really onerous. What was our biggest problem? Biggest problem was in our case that they couldn't tell the difference between what the transaction number is at the top of the screen and our shift ID that's at the bottom. I would say that was probably the biggest problem of all the things we had happen last year. Some general final comments. Now, I have to understand that our, the Groby way might not be your way or to the people who are watching. Uh, each re re retailer has to answer the warranty problem for themselves, okay? But for us, we found that COVID-19 brought out the very best and worst in people. It also pushed us to assess and change a great deal of what we had done before to try to give us all here an improved work-life balance, reduce stress, and to improve the morale. We all know that how hard it is to keep staff, and we do not need the warranty process to be one, la one more thing to have us leave, uh, lose a staff in order to deal with this. Uh, with this assessment of what we've done in the past came the question, do we want every customer? Is our best customer really the one that deems the ability to return a plant without question as the primary reason for giving us their business? And in fact, what happened was we decided that our best customers will be those who will with us to help them to succeed when they try to get their plants to grow. If they don't really have a vested or caring interest in it, they might be better suited to uh, uh, another place where uh, they might get that 
that where they can make a mistake at anything to do anything and that we'll happy to give them to one of our local participants in that process so in in final uh, my final screen here is this process provided for us a quicker resolution, less staffing time, no dead plants appearing to discard or explain that stress on our staff. And we believe positions us to be considered partners in helping their success rather just than just in rewarding their failures. Okay. Our costs for customer warranty returns traditionally has hovered around half of 1% of gross sales. And last year it was uh, easily in around that half half of 1%, it has never ever been close to 1% in all the years that we've been here. So uh, I would just say that that's really the, the bulk of what I have to say about this process. I recognize uh, there, the only other thing that we thought is that if you're trying to start from scratch with this, like in our case, we've kind of been leading into it by having them bring in emails and deal with it online to start with. But one thing you might consider to do I suppose if you want to start this process from scratch, you might look to incentivize using the process versus doing it in person. So for example, something, a bonus for going it and doing it all online, rather than necessarily just showing up in your door on a busy weekend looking for a return. Um, you know, And maybe that might temper or encourage folks to take part in a process where you're doing it all online versus doing it all in-house. So that's really all I have to comment about the process we've had. And I hope we have had lots of questions. I'm going to turn off my sharing now. So. There we go. All right. That's great, Perry. Thank you so much. Um, I think that's that's the most in-depth time you have ever shared with me um, and, and now the audience on, on how you handle this. So clearly an awful lot of thought has been put into it. Um, we, don't, we don't always have the right answer. This just happens to be the one that we came up with. So for, for better or for worse, I just, you know, I, I know that this is a, every time warranties has come up, it's been a bone of contention amongst our industry on, on dealing with both the customers. I'm not necessarily convinced that you have to buy their loyalty by always assuming that because they make a mistake um, that you're going to fix it. Okay. Yeah. You know, I think you have to be a little bit more selective. And in our case, if you make it too liberal, too free, 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 if it's too easy, I think what happens is those costs, those costs of gross sales, you know that's a lot of money if you're you know the, that you're giving away essentially now one thing i would say and i would agree that you, i the previous two speakers talk about putting the put it on a gift card and i get the sense of that because in fact they're going to use it against uh, purchase and the potential is it'll be a higher purchase after the fact that's a great idea i'm glad i got from this i i uh, i for one prefer to have it sort of resolved in the year that the problem is rather than having those gift cards outstanding for till the person decides to get around with it that's the reason we haven't implemented it that way yeah. Which is yeah. great because one of the questions we have, um, which all three of you speakers can uh, answer is when the customer receives a gift card because the, the product was not available, do you put an expiry date on the reden redemption time period? No, for uh, no, not at all. They can spend it on whatever, whenever they wish. And really it's to our, if we're going to be truly callous, it's to our benefit that the, that gift card goes home and sits in a drawer for, for a little while. And then comes, comes back a year or two later as a, Ooh, look what I found. <laughs> Eric. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, there is no expiry on the, gift card we don't even it's the standard gift card so in theory you could re-gift and give to mom for mother's day and not tell her that it was because <laughs> you killed the plant <laughs> you can use it on anything so they can come by an artificial plant instead if they're having issues super um carrie was there another question to cover yes one more for tanya do you enter in client information for every sale, even if it is for one shrub? If so, how do you handle that when it's very busy at your cash? That was the single biggest question our staff asked when we started this is, oh my Lord, how do you do it in the middle of May? Um, it is an opt-in for a client. So if they don't want to enter it, that's fine. And if it, it's certainly for one spirea, we don't push it. If we've got a cartload of stuff that's four or 500 bucks, we tend to push a little bit harder. 
but over time, even if you even if you skip the really, really busy days in May, over time as you do this, you get to a point where you actually have the database already. So it becomes very quick to look up. And now you're not adding everybody in line. You might be adding 20%. And we found that during COVID too. We were adding probably 30 to 40% per day. Um, but we were, and they were brand new customers, but they're also a little bit younger. So it it made us look at what we were adding and how we were adding a little bit differently because that client also didn't want a printed receipt. They wanted it emailed and they liked the fact that they didn't have to hang on to anything. So when they came in, we could tell them what color mulch they bought last year or um, we could deal with the warranty without them having the receipt at all. Okay, one more. What info is added into the POS? We add as much or as little as the client will want. At a minimum, we're looking for their name and if they can give us either a phone number or an email. So at least that way we can figure out that it's that Jane Smith, that's helpful. Um, they can also opt out of the marketing at that point. So then we just, we keep that in a list over here or they can provide the full information, which is their address and postal code. So then I can use it for a little bit more data mining later on too. Perfect. Okay, this question is for everyone to respond on to. So why don't we start with Perry on this one? Does anyone do a different type of warranty for contractors buying at a contractor rate? Um, well, we're a little different than, for example, uh, my friends at Sheridan's who actually uh, have a contractor's division and sell wholesale to the trade. Um, if I was buying my product from Sheridan's, there would be no warranty to me. Therefore, I, I am perfectly adept at extending no warranty to trade uh, to people who purchase from us. I'm afraid we draw the line at that. Yeah, yeah. At Sheridan, we don't. There is no warranty on um, nursery stock for the contractors. Uh, we deem them professionals. It goes out in the same quality. Um, that and they should know what they're um, they're doing. And if they want to extend um, a warranty to their guest, um, they're more than welcome to. Uh, is what we say. And um, they just deal with them, them on themselves. When it comes to hard goods and stuff like that, I mean, um, if they have a hose and it leaks or something like that, I mean, by all means. Uh, we'll do a warranty on that kind of thing or a shovel that has an issue with it for a manufacturer defects. But when it comes to plant material, um, it's, it's, it's as is in that situation. I have to confess, I was assuming plant material. Yeah. Hard goods are different. Yeah, and we're, we're the same. Uh, my, my apologies. I'm sure you're hearing the pooch in the background. There's a squirrel sitting on the porch. <laughs> All right, I, I had a I had a couple of questions and um, maybe directed to Perry, um, and I think you may have answered it, um, but I'm going to ask it anyways. So, okay. so do do you find that there have been um, a number of situations where your where your warranty has been the decision maker on whether or not guests want to proceed with you? No, I would say, well, I don't know, like, uh, without short of asking each and every one, to my mind, it's always been the thing that makes the decision for is the quality of the product and the day they want to buy it. Okay, the fact that we have people there to answer their questions when they want to have them answered, and that they have the confidence that what they're buying has been professionally and, and competently uh, in, in good condition prior to their purchase of it. I think, uh, you know, if the I actually took it out of my presentation, but I, I would just say where independents are concerned, we have to have the best stuff all the time, no exceptions. If it's not up to snuff, it shouldn't be out on the floor because every time it looks semi-standard or substandard, now you're not differentiating yourself from anything that's piled up on a parking lot on a rack someplace. And that, if you're going to tell folks that, you know, this is the proper way to care for stuff, here's how we do it look at my stuff it looks like it's been cared for you can do it too that to my mind is uh, is imperative where that's concerned i think that's what makes the difference in the sale 
Thanks, Perry. Um, more questions, uh, Carrie? No, I think it's safe to uh, wrap up here at 12.56. Okay, cool. So first of all, just a, a huge thank you to, to Perry, Tanya, and Eric for your time and your expertise. Um, that was a really valuable session. Um, a, a couple of things that I was furiously writing down, listening to you guys. Um, I love this. Uh, you mentioned it a couple of times, Tanya, reserve the right to educate. And Perry, you, you, um, you had mentioned uh, something that resonated with me. I'm, I guess I'm a little bit about cliches, but I want to be a doctor, not a coroner. So again, that's a, you know, you, you fix these things upstream. So um, really well done. Also really, really impressed um, and pleased to see that each one of you know statistically what percentage uh, your replacements cost you as, as, a, as a number against sales. So, you know, tracking the numbers and knowing what, you know, what percent that is of your business is critical. It allows you to make uh, solid business decisions and separate it from emotions. So. Hats off to you guys for that. So um, I'm not sure if anything else came in, Carrie, question-wise. Uh, just whether or not the panelists are willing to share their slideshows, that's all. So to I, I think to answer that, Carrie, that this presentation is going to be available for distribution to the audience. So I think the... I, I would say the slides are impregnated within the, the presentation now. So I, I would I would guess that's a yes. Unless I there's think, anything. I, I think those who have taken the time to download and watch this event will get the benefit of the expertise that the three of us have given to them. And to my mind, uh, you know, if they're gonna rebroadcast this, which I don't know why they would, but if they do, then yeah. uh, then they should they will get the crew all of that information at that time, I think. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Perry. Well, again, um, thanks to the three of you. Uh, thanks to Carrie and Amy for administering at LO. And thank you to all of the participants for, um, for uh, carving out one hour of your day on the very first day of spring. So uh, hope to see you all next Monday and have a great week, everybody.